I do want to start. I want to start. I want you guys to know that I'm recording you also. So take that. Uh, we have a guest reporter here. Uh, yes. What's your name? Roscoe McDonald. Roscoe, what's your story? Where are you from? Um, I'm, um, I live here right now, but I'm from Washington, D.C. Okay, very cool. And how did you get in the press corps here? Um, well, my mom's um, our, uh, Ronald McDonald house, they got picked, I think, to sponsor or something. Yep. And um, I'm her son, so I got <laughs> You got a question ready today? Uh, yeah. All right, I'm going to go to you first, okay? Yeah. Um, I got a, I'll start with a little sermon that I enjoyed so much on Sunday. Um, I speak no Japanese, but was introduced to this concept of mu i, which essentially means be still. This is, I promise you this is going somewhere. And um, then if you do a really bad Google search translation, you get... Um, something like nothingness and so on and so on. And I love this idea so much um, right now is we're kind of in the throes of this brilliant, incredible opportunity. We're spending some time on our staff and with our team talking about finding moments just to be still. You know, from a religious perspective, uh, you know, be still and know that I am God. Uh, from a team perspective, just be still. Just find a quiet moment off of your phone, off of, me, off of media, off away from guys where we can be still um, in this melee, and it's awesome. And so um, I think it's important for our guys. It's certainly important for our staff. We talked about it today, and we're trying to spend some time doing that. So as soon as I'm done with you guys, I'm going to go take two minutes and be still. With that, can we uh, grab the first question? Wow. <laughs> so interestingly enough, um, I did not come from a family that was very much into athletics. Uh, we had people in the theater and the arts. Um, my dad was a debate champion. Um, and so we did not have a real athletic background. With that said, I'm still probably the worst athlete of my five brothers and sisters. Oh. <laughs> All right, you got it. You got a future, my friend. That's really good. That's really good. All right. Yes. Mr. Tony, KY Sports TV. At the uh, introductory press conference, I asked you about uh, getting local talent, mm -hmm. and you went out and got that. But can you s speak to the talent that you have on this roster as well as what you have coming in? Yeah. Uh, for next season and what you what you've seen from them yeah uh, I'm incredibly excited about our guys um, we have uh, it's it's a it's a brand new to college basketball to go construct a team um, in a month right to from scratch from zero I think it's just a new it's just a new experience and um, I'm really excited about our guys' talent level. I'm really excited about their experience. I'm really excited about their commitment and desire to be here at the University of Kentucky and represent what this place is. I'm excited about their hearts and their insides. Um, I'm excited about how they're growing together as a team. Uh, I'm full of optimism and excitement about this team. I think that we as a collective group are going to love watching these guys compete. And we're not going to see perfection. Uh, but we're going to see perfect effort and we're going to see close to perfect commitment. And um, from that, magical things happen. And so I'm really excited about that in terms of um, in terms of in-state local talent. That's that's a, an, it's 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 always been a really important part of the mix. And, and um, the depth of talent uh, in the state of Kentucky will always like every state, it it will have some fluctuations. But uh, there's great talent in this state right now, uh, tremendous talent. And, and with that, the gift of understanding uh, intimately from the time before you were even born. Uh, understanding um, what Kentucky means and what it is. And so that'll be an important ingredient of, of, of how we build this program moving forward. Yes. 
Daryl Burr with Cat's Paws. You're talking about being still. You, you struck me on that. Why is it important? What's the concern if the team and you guys aren't able to do that? And how hard is it actually? Yeah, it's it's. Um, listen, um, the, the this this opportunity for us to find quiet moments where we can just breathe and be peaceful. I think it's centering. Um, I think it's uh, a way for us in, to do so many things. One, it's a way for us to stay calm and focused, um, which is something that we'll be chasing all season long. I think it's a way for us to stay centered in terms of um, try and have our internal voice in this locker room and on this team be louder for us than all the external voices. That's really vitally important. Um, for every young person right now that's, that's you know, grown up carrying this around and is immersed in this social media barrage of input and opinions by people that um, don't really care about you, I think this taking a moment just to be still and listen to your internal voices I just think is massively important. Um, probably more here at Kentucky than anywhere else um, because uh, what makes this space brilliant if you can handle it in the right way is the volume but it can also make it debilitating and so um, it's something we're spending a lot of time teaching our guys about and thinking about yeah as you were talking about being here it seems like you've handled the you've been here before you're handling this is everything that it is how are your guys adjusting coming from some different schools where maybe the spotlight isn't as big where when you go to a football game or go to the mall, you're not getting berated by the fans and, and finding those moments to be still. How are they dealing with that, Dylan Ballard, from a sea of blue? Yeah, um, I think our guys are loving it, actually. I think they're enjoying every moment of it. And I think we have a, a bunch of veteran guys. We, ha we have some really young guys, and then we have some veteran guys that are teaching young guys um, a little bit about what this is, and we're all exploring the whole process together. And... Um, you know, our guys came here as eyes wide open as you can be. When you have guys that have played at one or two other schools and, and have played three or four uh, years of college basketball, you can't come to Kentucky more prepared than that unless you've been at Kentucky before. And so um, I think it also gives our guys a brilliant perspective. You know, one of the gifts of me, uh, I was a transfer also, and I played two years uh, – um, at another school and then transferred here. And the gift that I got was I got to recognize that Kentucky really is different than anywhere else in the country. Sometimes freshmen don't see that, and our guys do. And so I think they're appreciating and loving it, and I think they're also very humble, understanding that it's a, it's a, it's a massive, uh, massive beast um, that they've jumped into. And, and uh, so I think, it's, it's, I think our guys are pretty focused and excited to take it on. Yeah. Ben Roberts, Sarah Leader. Um, what's your philosophy on – starting lineups? Is it, is it best five? Is it, is it best pieces fit together? And, and how hard is that to manage with this group that had nine guys who have started off? Ben, I'm so sorry because I'm going to give you the worst answer. It's <laughs> both and all of the above. It really is. Um, you know, you, you'll always um, – I, I believe in the synergy uh, of every aspect of this game. I think that's such a massive part of this game. I think it's why team sports are brilliant. And so there's going to be times when, when I'm saying, hey, you know, we're going with this starting lineup because these pieces fit together. There's going to be times I'm saying that we're going with this starting lineup because it's our best five guys. Um, you know, there will be all the answers above. Um, I think that's a pretty dynamic space. Um, we don't spend a lot of time emphasizing starting. Um, it's, it's finishing that, that really matters. And sometimes finishing is even, uh, you know, not the most important thing, right? There's so many ways that guys make contributions. But um, there are times when on paper it might look like uh, you, you could make a really rational argument about why things, rotations should work differently um, because there are a lot of rational arguments to be made. But uh, we'll, we'll consider all those things kind of as we go. Yeah. Larry, I can't. I can't. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anybody in here that doesn't know Larry? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, thanks, Mark. I, I'm just wondering, how's the group text going with the former teammates? Are they yeah. full of advice? Have they slowed down a little? Or? I, I think there's the calm before the storm right now. Um, so I expect, uh, you know, I, I'm really toying with the idea of, of um, publishing uh, – uh, the whole strand as, as we get closer to it, I think it'd be really fun. So I don't know if I'm going to do that. Don't hold me to that. But I, I think it's going to get way more animated as we get closer to games. Yeah. Tyler Thompson, Kentucky Sports Radio. You know all about this program as a player. What have you learned about it as a coach so far? 
Oh, great question. Um, I'm really working hard to learn the job uh, because there's no job like it. And so um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn it. Um, and it is, uh, it's the one thing I know for sure, it's the greatest job in all of basketball. And, um, and there's no place I'd rather be. So I know those things for a fact. And um, I think it is uh, going to be certainly the most challenging uh, thing I've done in my career as a player or a coach, even more challenging than surviving Coach Patino, uh, <laughs> which is saying something, really. Um, but but I, I've definitely learned that that's true. I expected that to be the case when I got here. Yep. Mark, when you talk about that lesson of, of be still in that, in that Japanese proverb, it, is that as much of a lesson for yourself as you learn what yeah. this job is like and the throngs of it as it is? Yeah. Yeah, man, it just it just hit my heart hard uh, when I heard it on Sunday. It's um, it's um, I think it's probably really it's really brilliant advice for all of us actually. Um, but but uh, you know, w w this job is just begging you to never stop. It's begging you to be so consumed by everything that you never really think and that you never really listen. You never really really listen. And if, you, if, we, if we miss on that opportunity, for me in a spiritual sense, spiritual sense if, I, if I don't take the opportunity to really stop and listen and, and kind of commune, um, I'm not going to be a great coach. But, but all of the gravity is asking you to just go nonstop, which, which feeds into my DNA a little bit. It's, it's how I like to operate. So it's really important for me. For me to be a great coach, um, uh, for me to really be a good mentor to these guys, for me to kind of advocate on behalf of this program and this university and this state and represent this the way it is, I'm certainly not going to do it well uh, if, if I'm relying only on myself and, and if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm not taking time to, to, to really be still. It, it, you know, it's, it's really important to me. It's, I think it's a big deal. I, I actually think it's, it's, uh, it's something that I'm advocating for my players and, and, and certainly for everyone. I think it's awesome. Yeah, in the back, white shirt. Uh, Mason Morganiski with WHS 11. Mark, there's never... Tell me your last name again. Morganiski. Ah, are you not related to Bobby Hordusky? Hordusky was my... That's not a common name, is it? No, not at all. He's brilliant, <laughs> brilliant director of operations for me. He's, 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 he's beautiful. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> there's never been a Kentucky basketball team that's entered a season with this much experience under its belt. Mm -hmm. How much of that stillness um, well, it's good. We're counting on it a little bit. You know, it's interesting because it's a little bit like everything. You know, what I find all the time is I get old, I kind of find that everything's true in a sense, right? I say both things are true. So, for example, we have one of the most experienced teams in the history of Kentucky basketball. And we don't have a single player on the team that's ever worn a Kentucky jersey. And so it's both, right? Both those things are true. And so it's going to be where can we lean? Can we lean our experience? Can we lean on our on our togetherness instead of instead of succumbing to the fact that none of us have ever ex experienced Kentucky, you know, uh, individually or together? And so that's the battle. And I have a lot of faith in our guys, man. I think right now we have enough capital in the bank that I think we can withstand some hits and stay together. And I think that the guys are, they're learning. I, I talk about this all the time. I talk about the team, this to the team. Um, you know, when you're in a huddle and things are going good, everybody faces in and wants to look each other eye to eye. It's the same thing in this press room. It's the exact same thing. It's a human condition, a human experience. When things are going well, it inspires us to, to connect. And when things are going bad, you know, it, our, you know if, we, if we have a, a practice that doesn't go well, because all the games are going to go really well, um, <laughs> if we have a practice that doesn't go well, there's a good chance that we're going to walk into this room and maybe our eye contact isn't as fresh because what we do is we start to turn away, turn down, look around, and we start to get lost in our own head, right? And that's the battle. That's, that's the battle, and veterans know that battle. They understand it a little bit more than, because it's exactly the wrong recipe, right? When, when things are tough, when you're going through tough times, it, then, that's when we need to actually look at each other more and see each other more and rely on each other more and communicate more. Like that's what, that's what our life is begging us to do, to find solutions, but our instincts are to draw back and look away and be quieter and get withdrawn inside ourselves. And so, 
you know, those are the things that you count on veteran players to understand quicker and learn more. And certainly that's something we're talking about a lot on our team. Yeah, so I'm really excited. So Coach hit me a week ago, and, and um, you know, he kind of asked me, but he really told me that he was coming to practice. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, believe it or not, so I sat down with the staff, and I'm like, guys, you guys going to have to carry the day, man, because th this, this is my guy coming in here, Coach P. And so um, I'm, I'm really, you know, listen, anytime I get to spend some time with Coach is, 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 is time incredibly well spent for me. I love him. Yeah. Oh, all right. I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, let me move. Yep. See, I keep coming back to you, man. Go ahead. Uh, Cameron Drum with the Lexington Herald Leader. Yep. Uh, you spoke at the beginning about the depth of, of in-state talent. Yep. Obviously, you have two guys on this year's roster, Travis Perry and, and Trent Noah, who are acclaimed high school basketball players from the state. They obviously know what this program means to people in the state, mm -hmm. but can you speak to what they've shown you throughout the summer and early fall and, and their progression as freshmen? Yeah, I'm huge fans of these two kids, man. I'm telling you. Um, it's been, I've said this a couple times, but, uh, you know, the first day, um, Travis, I think Travis has never been uh, phased by anything in his life. I think he's like a 75-year-old soul uh, in an in a 18-year-old body. He just, he's specially, he's specially built that way. And he came in, he's like, man, I can't get a shot off. Right. And and, you know, and defensive assignments were really hard and a little bit his head was spinning defensively a little bit. And um, and then, you know, Trent, um, who, who, man, I, I just think this is special. I think he's really special. I think he's a really special human being. I, I, you know, I don't know Eastern Kentucky um, like people that grew up in Eastern Kentucky. I don't know it well like them. But if, if you had a guy that was going to represent the eastern half of this state in a brilliant, brilliant way. Uh, this Trent Noah is really special that way. He uh, So both these guys came into the first couple of days of practice. They were spinning around in circles. And both of them just kind of put their head down and went to work and went to work and went to work. And they are like sieves right now. They are learning so fast. You know, I've teased Trent that he didn't make a shot for the first six weeks. And we're like, we recruited a shot maker. Where is that part? And, and, and what's been great is he just kind of – He's just, I mean, he's executing things. In a sense, he has a little advantage because he came in here like tabla rasa, right? Like he, he didn't have, um, you know, he, there weren't a lot of things that he had to relearn or correct because he hasn't been in college before. And, man, he just is, you see him on the floor making decisions that are exactly the way we teach right now. We teach a little bit different. And we're like, man, we talked about that like twice, and you're executing it already. Um, and so it's – I mean, I love these kids. Uh, it's really special to have them on the team, and they're going to make a huge impact on Kentucky basketball this year. And certainly, as we move forward with this program, uh, I'm grateful to have these two guys. I couldn't ask for better human beings to represent the state of Kentucky than these two kids. Yeah. Jack Yeager with Kentucky Sports Radio. Analytics is a big approach to your philosophy and how you go about coaching. How, in terms of in-game or late-game uh, situations, how does analytics Yeah, so it's interesting because one of the tough things, uh, well, well, in terms of philosophy, yes, we'll rely on a little bit. But, you know, it's interesting because, the, you know, all of the numbers read out that fouling up three is it turns out to be a little bit of a wash, right? When you kind of do deep dives in the data and all the tangential research, right? Um, so there are some places where it weighs heavily. Um, mostly I do what I ask my players to do, right, which is to take in all the information, be curious, like – Humility and curiosity, guys. You guys are going to hear me talk about that, uh, you know, from day one to the end of time, right? Um, it's just it's the components of, of players that grow really fast. They're really humble and they're really, really curious, and those are almost the same thing. And um, so to take in all that information and then, and then you kind of just have to read it in real time. Um, we don't, you know, it's, it's a little bit different than some other sports because um, – um, basketball is changing so fast, like this, the situations change so fast in the course of a game that you end up with a product in the last few minutes of the game that might not be anything resembling the product that you, you anticipated. And you probably have introduced four or five or six or seven new variables because you don't stop, right? It just is, keeps going and going. 
And so we'll use it really heavily, um, but, but you know, w w it also has massive limitations. Like you talk about lineup com combinations late in, late in the game. The truth is you'll be 18 games in the season and you still don't even have anywhere near close to enough data to actually rely on it at all. You kind of have a bunch of uh, biases that you rely on is probably what you do as a coach because, like, you know, like I've said before, in the NBA, you really start to rely on some of the analytics 41 games in uh, of 48-minute games of way more possessions, and, and we just never approximate that information over time, right? We just don't get that data set. So it's a balance. Yeah. Mark John Huang, Nolan Group Media. I've heard you say in the past that uh, you don't mind being called out if you do something wrong, it's yeah. kind of music to our ears. Yeah. We don't hear Kentucky basketball. Great. Yeah, it was a big mistake. I knew when the words would come out of my mouth, I'm like, this is going to be a problem. <laughs> what, what do you think is the role of local media yep. in covering the home? Yeah, yeah. So, um, listen, um, I, I think, I've said this before, I, and I really believe it, I think storytelling now Storytelling has always been a driving force in every community and society. Storytelling, storytelling, and um, storytelling in all of its different forms. Right? Is a is a debater? You're a storyteller. Is a is a is a business owner? You're a storyteller. Certainly, as a coach, you're a story storyteller. As a as a religious figure, you're a storyteller. Like it's it's like we. Um, you know, like, listen, one of the reasons, this is going to be a long answer. You ready for this? One of the greatest things about Big Blue Madness is, yeah, it's fun that it's the, the floor is going to be incredible and unprecedented and our guys get to be introduced and, and there's going to be mayhem and chaos and all the beautiful things that happen at, at Big Blue Madness. Um, but the best thing about it is that we are all in the same building together. Like, that's it. It's like it's this, it's this we all get to connect with each other. And, and that's the brilliant part of it. It's the first time in the season where 23,000 of us get to be in the same room together and just feel each other, right? And it's the best thing about sport. And so when I think about the, the local media and, and the national media and everybody that covers uh, Kentucky basketball every single day, I think, I think what I'm grateful for is storytelling. And it's, it's actually doubly as good when it's relatively accurate storytelling, right? Um, <laughs> but, but it's, 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 you know, and stories are boring. Uh, I mean, I, I hate to say this, but it's just true. Bo stories are boring if it's just kind of like glossy the whole time. It's just not, it doesn't capture, it doesn't capture us as human beings if, if it's just kind of soft and surface the whole time because what we're, what we're really taken by as human beings is when things look like they're going bad and everyone kind of makes a judgment and then all of a sudden they're not going bad anymore. And you're caught up in like, because all of us feel moments in our life where things are going bad, where we doubt, we're unsure, we're, we're insecure, we're, 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 we're thinking about maybe do we need to change course and we get to see that in sport every day. And so if we're not actually really telling the story, then I think we lose that connection that's so brilliant that we're going to be able to experience in Big Blue Madness. And so, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not begging you to say all the terrible things about me, for sure, but, but telling the story matters. And I, I think it's, listen, if, 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 if sport, if Kentucky basketball, at the end of the day, if the best and only thing that Kentucky basketball has to offer is um, having a great team and there's no like connection behind it. And it's actually not doing what it, it's not, that's not what's made it different than everyone else. What's made it different than everyone else is, is, is the connection that 23,000 of us get to feel when we walk in that arena Friday night and storytellers actually make that accessible to everybody. It's super important. So there you go, in the hat. Uh, Ryan Black with the Louisville Courier. I don't have a two part question here and I'm famous for doing these. So just Yep. And it's on Ann's team, so the first part of it is how Yes and no. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. Go ahead. Well, it, it, first off, you know, there's perceived that there's a big jump for him coming from where he came from yep. to now being the One, how have you seen him adapt to that? And two, do we as outsiders overrate that perceived jump? Because at the end of the day, basketball is basketball. Um, really interesting. Uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you a little about him and he'll make the jump a little, little – so, yeah, 
like the pundits in the basketball world that, that don't really do deep dives might think, ah, man, there's a big jump. But when you get in the weeds, it's, it's actually like not just not a big jump. It's a perfect fit. So you think about Ansley, um, grew up in the Northeast, uh, incredible family, um, is a self-made player in a number of different ways. Like who he is right now is so diametrically different than who he was when he walked onto campus his freshman year. How he's grown, his growth trajectory is incredible. He's a finance major. He's a brilliant young man. He digests information in life and in basketball so fast. He's become an elite level scoring, shooting, growing into passing big. He's a perfect fit for us. So the prognosticators, you know, we miss because we just don't have time. Like, it's, it's nobody's fault. If, if people weren't going crazy about Ansley uh, as they were evaluating the 1,800, give or take, players in the portal, that's no slam on them. It's just they don't have the time to do the deep dives that we have. Um, he's actually a perfect fit here at the University of Kentucky for this first year. I'm so excited to have him. Yeah? Michael Epps with Fox 56. Mark, obviously there's a lot – that's still going to happen between now and the Champions Classic. Yeah. It's a big game. That's yeah. the first big game for it. I know you're excited about it, and I think the fans are excited for you to watch. You know, if you beat Duke, that's kind of like, whoa. But do you feel like your team is going to be ready to hit the ground running or with this puzzle? Is it going to take a little while for you to piece your piece yeah, so uh, it, I know for fans, they might chalk it up as the first big game, but the first big game for us is is the blue-white scrimmage, right? That, that's the big one. And, so, and I know that's a – a disappointing answer for you, um, <laughs> but it's actually really true. It's it's really true for us. And then and then we have two huge exhibitions where we get to be out, and, and then we play Wright State and Bucknell, and, and those are huge games. The, the, you know, the it'll always be this way for us. And this is actually super genuine. This is not a this is not a. I mean, if you just watch football last week, right, um, you get a real sense of if your biggest game is not your next game, then you've then you've made a serious error in, in underestimating the greatness of sports, right? Um, with that said, I totally understand what you're asking. But if I don't say that, then my players are like, yeah, you don't, you really are, you know, but it's, it's just generally true. Um, I think that, uh, you know, um, these classics are, are really tremendous. Uh, you get a chance to play um, the, the most storied, uh, best, uh, programs in the country and so we look forward to them certainly through the course of our season and you know we talk about banners all the time and we love to have it floating out there but all of our focus is actually on today like all of our focus right now is on today's practice that we got to get better today and if we put the days together if we stack the days then we'll be ready yeah Coach, you know, yeah, Andrew Giovanni at Kentucky Wildcats on the side. So, we know you like bigs who can pass the ball and talked to Brandon Garrison during a meeting window a few uh, months ago and he said, hey, I, I think Amari and I are some of the better passers in college basketball last year. What have you seen from them so far in the summer and fall and, and do you think they've lived up to that when it comes to passing the ball? Yeah, I'm mean, really excited about them. So, we actually um, – uh, so – I had the great fortune of of coaching Ali Khalifa for a year last season, and I love when players teach you about the game, and and um, just by seeing what they can do and how far you can push them, how far you know how far you can take their talent and just stretch it right, and how how much you can utilize it, and um, and so he actually changed the way that I think about processing the game a little bit, he changed passing angles and changed passing alternatives and. And, and tracking the whole process of tracking as a big when you're working uh, in, in any number of actions. And so I was, I was super, like, it, last year was so fun learning. As a coach, it was so fun learning. And, um, and trying to stretch, you know, my players and, and, and myself. And so we kind of came into this year thinking, hey, so now we got to learn it. We got to see it. We got to watch it and really expand and explore it. But can we teach it? And that has been such a fun process this year. And these guys have picked it up like, I'm shocked with how fast they've picked up kind of this new way of decision-making 
you know, um, as, a, as a decision maker for a five. It's actually super great. Uh, we knew they were talented passers coming in, um, but expanding their range of how they think about delivering the ball has been great, and, and they're making huge progress. I think we're going to love watching these bigs go to work. I, I really do. I think there's going to be times where it's just like, wow, I did not see that coming. I'm looking forward to that. Um, who, I, I haven't uh, in the back. Yep. I'm on the very WRNT nominees. Uh, at Vandercamp, you, got, you said that um, you all put together the best shot making team in the country. What has the process been like for you bringing together all these individuals and turning them into the team and the identity that you want in your first year here? Yeah, we talk, um, uh, well, first of all, I got, there's great human beings on this team. Like, there's great people with really terrific insides, and we're relying on that a lot. Um, to, for them to come together as a team, and then we focus on it. You know, it's it's contagious. It's this is nothing new. You guys have heard this since the beginning of time. But making plays for your teammate is contagious, and the trick is you have to lean into it really hard with faith um, to get the process started, right? And and once you believe enough, you have enough faith in the process. Then you can start to experience, man, man, this thing does come back. It does come back. It does make the game more fun and easier and better and more inspiring. And, and, but, but the first steps are counter to the, to the way most guys are raised and the way we cover most guys. Um, you know, in, in no slam, but in the media, it's, it's different than the way we cover most guys. It's different than the highlight films we normally see. The things that we value on our team that we think are extraordinary playmaking attributes probably aren't going to show up on a – on 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 the highlights, but they're massive highlights for for the the people that are just living hugely in the weeds of the game, which would be limited to just about every member of BBN, right? And this is why it's going to be so fun to share this product with 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 our fan base. But um, our, our guys are jumping in hard, and they're doing a great job. Is someone else who has not had a chance? To, yep, go ahead. Mark Tristan Ferris, the Kentucky Insider. You talked a lot about having one of the most experienced teams in college basketball, yet they're not experienced playing together. But how often have you found yourself them coaching each other rather than you coaching? Yeah, we're working really hard on that. Um, you know, the first four or five weeks, we got a lot of, you know, we tried to put the guys together and huddle them. You got to go handle it. And it was a lot of blank stares. Of course there was because guys hadn't learned our terminology and vernacular and they hadn't, they hadn't learned kind of how we see the game. And so what's fun is um, – you know, in the past, it's kind of like you take a, a player and, and you get him for a year and you talk to him and at him for a year and he starts to digest it. And then you know you're making progress when he starts to actually repeat the words, right? And so we've just tried so hard to expedite that process, almost like, it, you know, I've talked about this a lot of, uh, in, in medical school. So see one, do one, teach one, right? That process. and and. And so our guys have really done an unbelievable job expediting that in a lot of different areas where I'm really proud of how they're, they're working and it's becoming almost natural, instinctive to, to, to come into a huddle or on the floor to communicate. Now, we have simple places where we're still like, you know, declaring the ball in transition defense has been a major principle for the last couple of weeks and still we're thinking about so much that we get distracted by the most simple concept. But so we still have places where we have massive growth to do. But I've been really proud overall of, of the guys' progress. Someone else who hasn't had a chance. Yep. Um, I know there's a t uh, Lily is sexy and is missing, and I'm Larry Bott's intern, but nice. we're super excited mm -hmm. as college students for you to be coming back, and I know an older generation like my mom, who was at UK when you were here, is riveted. Thank you for saying your mom and not your grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, because I am getting some grandma, grandmas that were here with me, and I'm just like, wow, I'm getting old. Anyway, well, keep mom, going. But she's a huge fan, so what does it mean for you to be back here and coaching this team, but also as a champion for the Wildcats yourself? Yeah, um, you know, so, um, we, you know, there's a million ways can answer that question, but let me tell you one of the ways. So, um, I don't know, guys, this is going to sound so petty, but it's not. It's going to sound petty, and then let me explain. So, from time to time, I get to sign an autograph, and below it, I get to put 96 champs. And it's not, it's actually not, it's, 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 um, that sounds super petty, right? Because I on the on the petty side, I recognize that that's just um, a little bit bragging rights, and it's a little bit like you know there haven't there are not many people that get to write that, right? And so, but but what means so much to me is that in that nine six C H A M P S 
exclamation mark um is like a whole lot of like fight and blood and sweat and tears and together and like leaning on guys and a lot of doubts and worries and frustrations and hopes and perseverance and all that's wrapped up into that and um, I'm grateful that I get to do that and be here and do that because that's what I want from for my guys so badly. I want for our guys. I want them to be able to to be able to write that, you know, for their year, and then to be able to write that C H A M P S underneath it. And it's not about that. It's not about bragging rights or anything else. It's about like the 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 the. Mm, right that you know that nobody else knows except the other guys that were in that locker room that really really know and um it's and then and then how you grow as a human being through it and so it's, it's i'm so grateful to be back here to to um to take our big swing at it and see see if we can get there i'd like all of our guys to be able to write that good yep a anybody else not ask a question uh, yes <laughs> go ahead yes. Thank you. Aaron Gershon, Cast Buzz. You talked about having to start from scratch. You talked about how you identified some of the portal targets early on and also Coach Brooks and uh, Coach uh, really Hart, who you had worked with before. Yeah, um, so um, I'll start with the coaches. So uh, Coach Hart, I played with at Milwaukee, and, and he's one of my favorite human beings in the world, and he's a big-time coach, and he's had incredible success at the college level and at the professional level coaching. Like, he's a veteran, veteran coach who is, um, you know, I'm gonna be shocked if all these guys aren't gone next year with head jobs, which is the goal. Um, I, so I, I've known him and loved him and admired him for a long time. He does incredible work. And then uh, Coach Brooks, I didn't know as well, but I knew his reputation. Everybody in basketball knows his reputation. And then um, through conversations, um, I realized, and, and you'll hear me say this so many times because it's so true, he is such a better person than he is a coach. And he's one of the most recognized coaches, uh, associate head coaches in all of college basketball. But he's an incredible person. Like, he's a gift. It is, you know, uh, it's, it's kind of like when I sit down with a recruit or sit down with current players and their families and, and the, 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 you know, the floor slides over to Coach Brooks, I'm like, yep, you're welcome, people. Enjoy this. <laughs> Okay, he's really special. And I actually feel that way about every single guy on my staff. Like I, I'm, I'm really blessed to be able to work with great people on my staff. I'm, I'm really excited. Um, and then in terms of our players, it was, a, it was a fun process because when you're working out of the portal, you have film in college on every single player. And so, so we got to be as specific as, as we could. And, and um, you know, it was pretty easy to target the guys like, oh, man, you look at his game and he just fits exactly what we do uniquely. And so we're really excited about that. Super great for you guys. Thanks for covering us, and uh, let's go, Cats.